Today we're filming at the beautiful Lake Tahoe. Our special guest is Grandmaster Mark Shuey, the founder of the American Cane System. Welcome to the I Cane Do program. I created this program to bring awareness to people about an alternative self-defense program. While there are many different self-defense and martial arts programs out there already, most of those programs are aimed at the younger adult or kids. The I Can Do program is geared for the mature adult who understands the benefits of staying active while maintaining the ability to address any situation that life may bring their way. The I Can Do program will teach you how to use a walking cane as a tool for exercise and self-defense. The program also introduces you to different ways of overcoming your limiting thoughts, thus helping you to stay motivated to continue training, which will enable you to continue having a good quality of life. While the TV show is a great way to get started, it is important to remember that the show isn't the replacement for a proper instruction from a certified teacher. Now let's start training. Okay, Bob, we're going to work on namaste stretching. It's going to stretch all our wrists, forearms, okay? Hands up here. And once again, the most important thing is breathing. So as you're breathing in through the nose, as you exhale, relax. Push those hands together and push them down. Push your palms towards the floor. Breathe. Relax. You even close your eyes if you want. Exhale, relax, and push a little bit more down towards the ground. Good. Make your back straight. Keep pushing. Breathe. Exhale and push. Exhale, push down. That's good. Now let's move it down this direction. Turn as far as you can. Everybody's body's different, so just do what you can. It's not a contest. Once again, now you're going to breathe. Now pull it up towards your chin. Get that back straight. Exhale. Up. Good. Feel that stretch in the forearms. The higher you go up, the more you're going to feel the stretch. Excellent. Okay. Good job. Relax. Now we're going to work on cane rotations single-handed. What you want to do is find the balancing point of your cane and then grab it. The first one's going to be doing tight. Take your other hand and put it about an inch from the wrist. This is all for loosening up the forearm. So start it going 180 degrees back and forth. Start slow. You never want to do this fast to start out with. You might pull something, but go slow. You can go faster after you're going here. You want to do it about 10 times. We're just loosening up the forearm and the wrist area, elbow and some of the shoulder. After about 10 times, take your hand that doesn't have the cane in it and bring it down just about an inch above your elbow. Now you can do this tight or you can loosen up a little ring in there depending on what you want to do. I like to start out tight, keep on loosening, then loosen up with the finger here a little bit back and forth to the ring. You're going about 210 degrees now. Now the last one you're going to take your left arm, put it up on your shoulder, you're going to loosen your grip up and you want that cane to go at least 360 degrees. So you have to have it loose. About 10 times is fine. We're just warming up. We've done the rotation on the right side. Let's move the cane over to the left. Okay, Bob, I'm going to work with you here a little bit. Okay, get your arm as straight as you can. Grip the uh, cane nice and tight. Nice and easy. We're just doing warm-up stretching. Okay, now let's move the hand behind the elbow about an inch. Now here you can have a good tight grip or a loose grip. Either way. Okay, back and forth. Once again, we don't want to go too fast. Going, that's real good. Now let's move the hand above the shoulder there. Now here you want to try to get that cane to go 360 degrees. You, you have to loosen the grip to do this. 
Okay, just make sure the cane doesn't fly out of your hand, and back and forth. And keep the cane, don't move the hand so much, just move on the wrist. So we're trying to still loosen up those wrist muscles. That's good. Nice job. We're now going to go ahead and stretch the back. I'm gonna, we're going to do the cat stretch. So I'm going to have Bob grab the cane in both hands. You want your hands close together. And he's going to push the cane forward and then move the shoulders forward even further. Now, when doing this, you want to keep your back straight, but the shoulders pushed forward. That really opens up the rhomboid section of the back. Okay? And if people, when they carry tension, they carry it in the trapezes and in the rhomboid. All right? This also will help to extend your reach. So if you're finding that you're reaching for something and you just can't reach it, by doing this stretch, you'll actually find you can reach higher because now you have less tension, less pull in the back. Okay? And while doing this, focus on breathing. But you're going to find it's difficult to breathe into the chest. We're all taught belly breathing and chest breathing. But if you focus on breathing and expanding the back of the rib cage, train your body to use the entire structure to breathe. And you're going to find that you actually get deeper, more relaxed breaths. And it helps to intensify the stretch gently and gradually. Hold this for about 30 seconds, then gently release, shake it out. Okay, we're going to work on twisting with the cane. The cane will be in both hands, arms out, and we're going to start twisting all the way around. Use those feet. Rotate the feet around. Get your back straight also. It's important to have the back straight as you can. Try to touch your head to the ceiling while you're doing this stuff. Okay, nice and slow. This is not a race of any kind. We're trying to loosen ourselves up. So make sure your footing is wide enough, at least shoulder width apart. Twist around as far as you can. Nice and gentle. Remember, we're just warming our bodies up here. Good job. You want to do this for about 60 seconds or so. Back and forth. Nice and easy. Breathing, the most important thing on all stretching. As you exhale, twist to the outside. That's good. Okay. That's good, Bob. Okay, we're going to work on stretching out the shoulders and the back here. Take the cane from the starting position. Bob, you got it. Now put it behind your back, grab with both hands. Now from here, stand up straight. Get that back as straight as you can. Try to touch the top of your head to the ceiling. Breathe. And as you exhale, lift that cane up behind you. Just lift. Stretch. You can feel this in your shoulders. You can feel it in your triceps and in your back. Okay, you got that, Bob? That's good. Now, I'm going to go ahead. and You, Bob, you stay in that position. I want to show you a little bit of an advanced move here where you can go down if you'd like. You can have your head down here or you can have it up, depending on this works on your back and your neck muscles and keep on pulling those arms up. Okay, that's for people that want to do some advanced stuff. But Bob, you're looking good. You want to do the advanced? Bend over good. Breathe. Relax. Lift those arms up. Now let your head go down, and then lift your head up, and down. Now lift your shoulders up, your arms up. Good. Breathe. All, every little movement you do in here helps you in so many different ways. Do what your body will allow you to do. Okay, gently come back up again. Ease, stand up. Good. Good job. Take a nice breath. Put the cane down. That's a very important exercise. Try doing it whenever you can. We're now going to do the straddle stretch. Okay? And this is different than some of the ones that you've seen where people drop their legs and go all the way to the ground. Okay? So I'm going to have Bob straddle as far as he can comfortably. Okay? But still feel a stretch. He's going to put the cane behind his back. He's going to loop his arms around it. And now, he's going to squeeze his legs as tightly as he can, all right? He, if they even start shaking, that's great, because right now, you're getting an isometric workout. It means you're working the muscles, but it's going to help with the stretch. He's going to hold it for about 10 or 15 seconds, and then he's going to relax his legs, and immediately allow the hip to gently turn, okay? So that he's allowing himself to sink into it. It's now opening up the hips, and then he's going to rotate the other way, okay? Opening up the hips, he's going to turn back again, all the way, no, a full turn to the hips, 
Okay? You want, you want to go and you want to do the rotation for the hips three times. Because what's happening is you're actually getting the hip socket warmed up and lubricated by doing this slow rotation. You're getting synovial fluid into the hip joint. And that's great to help fight off any hip injuries uh, that may be coming. Okay? Now, he's going to gently turn back center. He's going to allow his legs to travel a little bit wider far apart. You notice how he went a lot deeper with that, and he's still just at a comfortable level for the stretch. Now squeeze, okay? What's happening is you're getting all the muscle fibers at once with this kind of a stretch. And what's ha also happening is you're, you're communicating to the body that, no, you are strong enough to handle the stretch. Because what happens is we actually stop ourselves before we reach our real stretch point. Because our body believes, oh my God, I'm going to tear a muscle. I'm going to tear a ligament. But the truth is, in most situations, you will actually have the muscle fatigue out and just give up before it actually tears, if you do the stretch gradually. Now he's going to walk his feet in. He's going to shake his leg out. OK, we're going to work on a, a stretch that's going to really work on the thigh, the buttocks muscles and the balance. It's a semi-advanced, so be careful when you're doing this. Okay, Bob, what we're going to do here, I want you to take your right hand, grab your right ankle down as low to your ankle as you can. Then move your knee into your side. That's good. Stand up straight. Back straight, head straight. Use the cane for balance here. Now take that ankle and pull up to your cheek. Put as far as you can. Now take your knee and move it back. Can you feel that stretch there on the upper thigh and the hip yes, there? Now, to make this a little more advanced, you can take the cane and lift it up here. Now we're working on balance and stretching at the same time. Okay, if you lose your balance, put that cane back down. Okay, pull, pull the knee back. Good, let me get out of position. Now let's try the other leg, Bob. Switch hands, nice and slowly. Don't want to move too fast. Okay, let's switch sides so the camera can see what we're doing here. Now he's going to do the left side. Grab your left ankle. Use that cane for support at the same time. Now get comfortable. Get the weight on some of the cane. Now, pull that heel into your cheek. Feel that stretch back there. Now, move your knee backwards. You want to move this time. You're almost lifting. Good. Now, for the doing the stretching and the balance, try to lift that cane up. Good. Breathe. Relax. Okay. Put the cane back down again. Bring the leg down. Excellent stretch. Stretching the thighs and working on the balance at the same time. Now we're going to use this segment to review a tactic, a stance called the, the twist stance. All right. And in martial arts, you'll see people get into this stance for either a punch or they're twisting a pull. Or in some styles, you see it used as actually a disguised kick. All right. But we're going to actually approach it from a different perspective. Now, we can do it start out close range. But we're going to choke up on the cane, okay? Because when a, an opponent's this close, you can't, you don't have the time, the space to do a full-sized fan block. So if we choke up on the cane, he throws the punch, okay? Go ahead and throw the punch. What's going to happen is I'm going to shift my body so I can step through with the lead side. Then I'm going to take a small pivoting step with my empty side, and then I'm going to bring my knee up and push down on his leg. And you see how he's turning and he's already going down. So I'm going to be stepping through with the lead side, going relatively toe to toe. Then I'm going to step behind, okay, not too far behind, but behind. And then the leg's going to come up line up with his knee, and then I just sink. Allow the weight to come down, okay? Once again, I step through toe to toe with the lead side. I step behind, I bring the knee up, and push down. And as you can see, Bob is starting to go. When you practice it at home by yourself, think of it as a dance. Think of it as one, two, kick. Or, you know, the whole entire 
one, two, three, drop. All right? Either way, practice it. Get comfortable with it. Make it instinctive. Have the cane as part of it. Right? So, one, two, drop. All right? Because you're protecting yourself. All right? Keep practicing. Okay, here's another nice self-defense technique. And in this one here, and in previous episodes, Brian's taught you how to do a little pop-up with the cane. It doesn't leave your hand, you keep your finger around it, but you want to be able to pop it up. So, in some of the tacky, he's coming at me here trying to hit me in the head. I'm going to block and do a pop-up with that cane. I bring it up here and I try to crush that elbow as hard as I can. I keep on lifting the cane up and I bring it around his neck and then I pull. This hand here grabs that hand, slide the hand down here, and I pull and push, dislocating the arm. He has to go down to the ground. Let's do it one more time here, nice and slow. Strike, pop up, smash. Round over here, pull that cane in tight, bend and pull, down they go. You can also have some fun and bring them down hard. <laughs> Try the technique, practicing it at the house. It's just a pop up, around the shoulder, back, pull, push pull. Very fun, simple technique. Okay, another uh, fun technique is, once again, you want to get the cane over here. Now, you don't have to do a pop-up this way. You can also just bring it down over here so that people can't see what you're doing when you're doing bringing that. What you're trying to do is getting the, the crook away from your hand so you have some working room. Okay, now this person's coming at me. He's either going to grab or try to hit me here. I'm doing this, bring it up here. I'm going to smack him in the chin. Now, from here, I'm going to bring this cane. I like to put it behind the neck and I have full control. But if I don't have time, I can just grab in the back. I'm going to pull down hard and bring up my knee here. Okay, if I do have control of the neck this way, he can't back up at all. And I can pull, I can hit the groin, I can hit the chest, depending on the position he's in when everything's happening. Remember, on the street, nothing's going to work the way it does in practice. Everything's going to be a little bit off. So let's start again here. Grab, pop up, chin, grab, kick. And you can also push him away with the cane. Okay, doing it without a partner. What I'm doing here, I'm blocking the punches coming in. I got the cane up here. I'm aiming for the chin as hard as I can. It could just knock him out right there. Okay, and then I wrap around the neck. Or if the, the crook is facing down, I go to the spine. If you have a bird's head on your cane, he's not going to get out of it. As you're pulling down, you bring your knee up and you hit. To get him out of the way, you can push him down like so. Practice, add things as you like. The more you play with the cane, the more you're going to be adding. On this technique, the person's grabbing me on my cane side, thinking that I'm going to be totally defenseless once he grabs my arm with the cane in it. So he's grabbing, pull, come across. I'm bringing the cane up and over, and down he goes. Just kidding. Good, okay. Now, I did the first time I didn't have your arm in there. Yeah. So, as you do this technique, grab again. As I come up, I might get his arm in. I might be able to come around to the inside of his arm. I got the inside of the arm. I have a lot more pressure on his neck. You have to be real careful on this one, okay? If his arm is in there, this way here, you're still doing a lot of neck problems here, but I got, I got him under control. I can flip him. I can throw him. I can have a lot of fun. Once again, nice and slow, grabbing. I'm just lifting my cane up as I'm coming through here. I grab it and I bring it back to me. Going through this technique just by yourself. He's grabbing, he's pulling my arm. All I do is lift the cane up. Okay, as it comes up, it can go, you want to go behind his head. So all you're doing is lifting it up, and then you're going to grab the cane. It doesn't matter which way you grab the cane here, and then you are going to pull. Obviously, if you grab the, with your palm outwards like this, you're stronger. So you might want to deal with the palm here. But as you pull, you're just bringing everything towards your chest. And it gets very aggravating for your opponent. You could break his neck, so be careful if you're using it with a partner. But by yourself, it's just a simple up over, grab, pull in. Here we go. I'm on the phone. Taking out the legs. That really hurts the shin, so be careful on the, with your partner on the shin technique. Once again, half speed. Here we go. I step with it. 
turn and strike. It doesn't matter what one of his feet is going to be forward or both. Very simple techniques. Don't get your cell phone stolen. Like us on Facebook. We appreciate all the feedback and the comments we have gotten about our show. And I ask more of you to write in, call in, email in to let us know what your thoughts are, what you'd like to see more of in the show, and the elements that you know, you'd like to see maybe different. We're trying to include guests, we're trying to include different locations to try and make the show more entertaining and informative for you. Please, go to our Facebook page or email or call us and let us know what you think. Let us know how much you like the show and what we can do better. Today's episode, we're going to focus on having gratitude for the people in our lives who have helped bring about positive change. The people who have had the most impact, positive impact in our lives. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is to think of, go to some quiet place and think of three people who have had a positive change in your life. And make a list of these three people. Make a list of ten ways that they have helped you to grow as a person, to bring positive change to, to your world and to your life. Alright? And then what you're going to do is for each of those items, each of those, those cha positive changes, you're going to sit there and go, thank you, thank you, thank you. To really make sure you feel the gratitude and understand how much they have helped you to grow within your world. Now in today's episode, you know, I had an opportunity to have as my special guest instructor one of the people who've had such a huge positive change in my life, Grandmaster Mark Shuey. He invented the martial arts system that I was able to turn to when I blew my knee. He has been very supportive of me as I do my TV show and as I grow my audience. All right. So he is somebody who I'm, I'm deeply, deeply indebted to and, and grateful for the help that he has given. He's always there whenever I need to talk to him about questions uh, or concerns. He's always there. He's always supportive. He's always positive. And Christina, he's always behind the camera, always directing us and keeping us on task and making sure that all of this comes together and gets to you every week. And then, of course, Bob, who without him, the show, as you remember in the old days, was a lot more flat, not as entertaining. And so we'd like to take a moment and thank them, to thank them for their help, the support, their, their involvement. You know, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is just an example, you know. Now, I can't go through all ten of the qualities and the ways that they've helped me in my life because if we did that then this would be much longer than a half hour show. But take the time, come up with ten qualities of the people in your life that have helped you to grow. Thank you for watching our show and I look forward to seeing you next episode. Like us on Facebook or Brian Gets It. Help, please! <laughs> <laughs>